Ancilla, your assessment of this, uh, this budget, I mean, does it do enough? So, uh, Fifi, uh, I'm like lukewarm with the budget. It was really good. I mean, it's to be expected. It's from Chinamasa. He's a very woke man. But the problem that I see mostly is, is it really realistic? Mm. Because he is the same man who promised to bring down the deficit by $1 billion last mm -hmm. year. Uh, it was sitting at $1.4 billion, mm. and that was by $400 million and it didn't happen. And now he's promising another $1 billion reduction. So is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? So you mentioned a lot of things about how he intends to do that, how a government is going to cut down on expenditure a lot. We know uh, the Mugabe family was known for shopping and being luxurious. We know <laughs> which <Would you> grace <laughs> <laughs> did a good job of. And um, we know that they were spending a lot on cars mm -hmm. and salaries. Mm -hmm. and I even the former finance minister was found with a huge chunks of money in his household. Mm. So he focused a lot on corruption and making sure that doesn't happen. So because of that, we saw also a military involvement and a big chunk of money. I think it was $402 million, if I'm not m mistaken, that is going to go into defense and, and uh, that aspect. But uh, while we're on that point, if you must mention that a lot of people are not happy about that because, yes, th they were seen as the messiahs and the, the saving grace of Zimbabwe when they took down Robert Mugabe. Mm -hmm. But uh, on, on Tuesday, we saw military people starting uh, to walk down on the streets and telling the vendors on the sidewalks to go home and taking the stuff that they're selling from, you know, fruits and all of that. We know there are no jobs in Zimbabwe. Mm. We know and the informal economy yeah. is the essentially the biggest employer in Zimbabwe. It, it's the biggest employer. So they're already being targeted because the government is saying they're trying to clean up um, the city, clean up Zimbabwe to try and make sure that, you know, the country is more attractive to investors and all of that which is a big problem and a lot of people are saying why not then first to concentrate on ensuring that you create the jobs because those people who are selling on the uh, on the sidewalks are graduates they mm -hmm. sell wearing their gowns or tell you I've got a, a, a master's in IT and all of that so first create the employment before you start targeting people Ansela, uh, China has also extended a credit facility of 213 million dollars to to Zimbabwe what does that mean and what does first what does Zimbabwe's budget mean for foreign investors who are looking in to see what the new area in Zimbabwe will bring and does this further solidify uh, the China Zimbabwe relationship with that loan facility Definitely it does, uh, but a lot of people on the ground are worried about China's involvement, not just in Zimbabwe, in Africa at large. What does it mean? Some people are even going as far as saying that, you know, this is colonization again, just in a different way without guns and uh, people being told not to do whatever they want to do. Mm -hmm. But because Zimbabwe has not been able to pay back the debt that uh, uh, they already have on China, so the question is how are we going to pay back this money? Mm -hmm. And they're investing this money over and over into Zimbabwe, even if Zimbabwe is not being able to pay back so people Raises are asking questions. what, what are, are you the really the thinking that you're going uh, to gain yeah, yeah. And, and and if uh, Zimbabwe's deficit is going to go down by one billion dollars why is uh, the minister concentrating a lot also on borrowing uh, because they said they were going to borrow a further two billion dollars to put putting it on 8.2 billion dollars so it doesn't make sense there so why are we borrowing so a lot of people expected to see the minister concentrate more on uh, talking about how the country is going to be self-sustainable and make this money on its own because we know um, agricultural sector is booming, the rains have been great in that country and uh, what are we going to bring back the farmers, what are we going to do in that sector. We know platinum and uh, parts of the gold industry are also thriving. Mm. So people were seeing that and also we know that textile industry was one of the big industries especially mm. in Bulawayo which is the Matabelele North uh, region of the country. So they were looking forward to seeing if those big textile companies are also going to be reopened. Is there a little bit of uh, finance that's going to be put onto that? Mm -hmm. I mean, Ansela, you mentioned that defense is getting quite a large chunk of the budget. Where else is that money going? So we see a lot of money going to education, which mm -hmm. is to be expected from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. There is $905 million that's going to primary and uh, high school education. Mm -hmm. So healthcare is also another major uh, uh, benefactor in this. And we know that this has been a big problem. If you get ill in Zimbabwe today and go to a ha government hospital, believe it or not, they'll write you a script and you have to go and buy from the injection, the syringe. You have to buy everything, cash, 
before they can treat you. Mm. So that's also a very big sector that uh, I'm going to be investigating mm. um, this December as well to look at you know how that's working out and if, th if that is going to improve at all. It hasn't been that long since we saw, it's only been a couple of weeks since we saw Mnangagwa coming in with his new cabinet and, and a new time for Zimbabwe, a new era. Has he missed an opportunity here to galvanize a lot more of Zimbabwe, to include a lot more of the excluded people? A lot of people are saying that, but I think one thing that we always have to remember mm. is that this was a ZANU-PF exercise. This mm. was in-party politics. A lot of people were see, thinking of, will we see an inclusive government? We've seen that it doesn't work. It was tried in Zimbabwe and it didn't work. So uh, I don't think that's the way to go. But through the cabinet, we see it, it, it was basically an old cabinet that was just placed in front of us. Mm. So the, the criminals that they were talking about, that they were trying to get out uh, from Mugabe's side, wh was it just two people? Mm. <laughs> because most of the people are still there. Mm. And we're seeing people that um, have had questionable behavior in the past uh, also being included in the cabinet, which raises a lot of questions. And one person I spoke to yesterday actually suggested some sort of TRC sort of set up in Zimbabwe mm. because we know that the new president allegedly uh, was one of the people who was in the forefront of the Kukure Hundu that we saw in Zimbabwe. And in his cabinet, we don't see a lot of people from the Matabeleland region. Mm -hmm. We don't see that inclusion. Mm -hmm. uh, you find that even when uh, Zimbabwe does speeches and all of that, it's mm -hmm. always in Shona. Mm -hmm. And like, where is that integration of the other languages? Because apparently Zimbabwe is 16 national languages. So wow. how, how does that work? So mm -hmm. even the second biggest, which is Ndebele, you don't see it featuring often enough. So one person suggested that maybe we need some sort of truth and reconciliation mm. where people come and sit down and say, mm. listen, we agree, we were wrong, those are the wrongs of the past, mm. how can we compensate? Mm. The same way we try and compensate the black people from what happened. So how do we compensate the, the other marginalized group mm. uh, uh, in the tribal sense of things mm. um, to get included into the economy? Mm. So it, it remains to be seen if that is going to happen because Chinamasa or uh, uh, um, Nangwaga himself, they've not come forward to say, this was wrong and we did it and we apologize.